In my previous video I built PC for eSport titles and it had one big problem – low amount of cores and threads. For new modern and heavy games, you can notice it especially in games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In this video we will build pretty same PC but with many cores and threads. Let's start from power supply. We have VIC 1650, PSU on 1650 watts. This is a modular power supply, which I bought from after mining for a very low price. You can take any 600 watts, I mean something good like Chief Tech Proton or something else. Two storages we have here, one is SSD from AliExpress on 120 gigs for Windows and HDD on 500 gigs for games and files. We have here 16 gigs of the 4 type working on 21 to the 3 MHz. From G-Skills company, I will leave link for your memory from AliExpress, which also working good. We have 4 sticks for activation quad channel mode. Motherboard is Plex HD X99, you can also know it as a utter miner. This one is a very good motherboard for its price, I already have a video about it, you can find it on my channel. Supporting boost hack or unlock turbo boost. But there is one more version of this motherboard which supporting the 3 memory RAM, so you can take it as well. CPU, we have a really amazing one, Intel Xeon E5-2678 version 3. CPU, one of few which can work with the 3 memory type, I mean among CPUs version 3. Also have a video about that CPU, which you can find on my channel as well. CPU has 12 cores and 24 threads, clock on a stock 2.5 GHz and a boost 3.3 and boost for all cores 2.9. If you unlock Turbo Boost, you can reach 3.3 for all cores. I will test this CPU in a stock, cause for our GPU, even this CPU is more than enough. Graphic card one of the best one among used graphic card on my opinion. Nvidia GeForce GTX 1070. Graphic card still can handle with games in a full HD on high settings. For eSport, this is a more than enough. Graphic card you can also overclock, has amazing performance and today you can buy it for a low price from second hand. I will record this video by using video capture card, so there is no impact on the final FPS here. I will test whole system in a stock, we will test in the modern line games and few heavy games. All useful links I will leave for you in description. If you like that video, please do not forget about subscription, likes and comments. Let's start from benchmark test fire strike. In summary, we have 14 400 points. Separately, CPU and GPU has pretty same amount, 1700 points, so based on the benchmark test, we have a pretty balanced system here. First game on our test is CSGO, this is a game is pretty low and still many people are playing in it. We have a high settings and full HD resolution and here everything is amazing, frame graph and time straight, minimum we have a 183 and an average 269 FPS, which I consider as a good result. Second game of the test is Fortnite, middle settings and full HD resolution. Here system loads much better, gameplay we have very good, minimum 134 and an average 172 FPS. Game runs very good and no any problems confirmed. Next game on our test is PUBG, game demanding for a graphic card. We have middle settings and full HD resolution, and here graphic card almost overload, meaning we have 129 and an average 162 FPS. Frame graph looks fine, game running without any problems. GTA 5 is the next game on our test, very high settings and full HD, game is famous as well, system does not overload here, minimum we have 88 and an average 105 FPS, frame graph is ok here. So 
Next game on the test is Apex Legends, middle low settings and full HD resolution. And here everything looks ok, only graphic art loading high, minimum 119 and in average 166 FPS. And this is a good result especially for gaming monitor. Next game on our test is Battlefield 5, we are playing in online mode, using DirectX 11 instead of 12, game using well whole system, middle settings and full HD resolution, minimum 115 and an average 131 FPS, we have GPU bottleneck here, at the same time game runs very good. Witcher 3 is the next game on our test, high settings and full HD resolution, hair works and hair turned off, game like to use graphic card and here we have GPU bottleneck, frame graph and gameplay well, minimum 98 and an average 112 FPS, so we can play in Witcher 3 as well. Metro Exodus is the next game on our test, high settings and DirectX 12, and here again GPU bottleneck, beginning of the world location, and here everything runs well, minimum 64 and an average 75 FPS, and this is ok and stable FPS. Last game on the test is Shadow the Tomb Raider, you are asking me to test on a benchmark, so I decided to run benchmark test here, forget about monitoring, I mean my monitoring of low and average FPS, let's watch on the final results only. In average we have 88 FPS, which I believe is enough for a gaming, but in, di but in different locations you will see other FPS for sure. Let's have a conclusion about this PC, on my opinion we have a good PC, but here is a big bottleneck from GPU, uh, this is actually a positive side here, you can update graphic card and let's say put there RTX 2070. For full HD games I consider this GPU is ok, all useful links I will leave for you in the comments. If you want to keep some money, take motherboard x99 with the 3 memory RAM, because the 3 memory RAM is a cheaper, you can take system for a lower amount then. Thanks all for watching that video, I hope that was at least useful for you, please smash like and subscribe on my channel and see you on the next one.